Hi, this is Dr. Victor bringing you latest updates in cardiovascular therapy area for this month. The first topic is on managing atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk in young adults. As we know, there is need to identify high-risk features that predict early onset atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. The author in this review has provided insights to some of the high-risk conditions in the 20 to 39 years age young adults. The author has updated current thinking on lipid risk factors such as triglycerides, non-high density lipoprotein, apolipoprotein B, and lipoprotein E. The author also reviewed emerging strategies such as coronary artery calcium and polygenic risk scores in this age group. Finally, the author discussed about obstacles and opportunity for addressing prevention in early adulthood. Following are some of the key points to remember from this state of the art review. Identifying high risk features like tobacco use, hypertension, family history of premature coronary heart disease, severe primary hypercholesterolemia, diabetes mellitus can predict early onset atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease among young adults and also can assist providers and their patients in modifying ACVT risk factors earlier. Next, smoking synergistically with other ACVT risk factors, doubling the risk of CHD and stroke, tripling the risk for sudden cardiac death and increasing the risk of peripheral artery disease by fivefold. Smoking prevalence is the highest for those in 25 to 44 years of age. Smoking decreases an individual's life expectancy by approximately 10 years. Smokers who stop before 40 years of age reduce their risk of smoking attributable death by 90%. Next, hypertension controls rate have declined in recent years. Among young adults, the lack of insurance and no timely clinical visit cause a lower rate of blood pressure control. Improved use of current guidelines for the measurement and treatment of hypertension among young adults is needed. Antihypertensive medication is recommended for stage 1 hypertension when lifestyle alone is ineffective. Next, Measurement of cholesterol early in life can identify those at increased ACVD risk, including at least every 5 years starting at age 20. In young adults with LDL-C of more than 160 mg per DL, the presence of family history of premature ACVD should lead to more intensive evaluation and statin treatment. Adults with familial hypercholesterolemia should initiate statin therapy with the goal to reduce LDLC by 50%. Non-fasting lipids, including non-HDLC and or apolipoprotein B, may provide a more accurate risk assessment than LDLC alone. Type 1 diabetes of more than 20 years or type 2 diabetes of more than 10 years and or microvascular disease or the presence of additional ACVD risk factors should be considered for statin therapy. Metabolic syndrome is underdiagnosed in young adults and is related to overnutrition and insufficient physical activity. Metabolic syndrome doubles the risk of ACVD, hence initiation of lifestyle modification with weight loss, a heart-healthy diet, and regular aerobic exercise is the first line of therapy. Currently, 10 years risk scores are not designed for those less than 40 years of age. A 30 years risk model may be preferable to discuss risk and the benefit of modifying risk factors among young adults. Risk enhancers include a family history of premature ACVD in first degree relatives with age group of less than 55 years in May, men and less than 65 years in women. Ethnicity, especially South Asian ancestry, may be risk-enhancing. And for young women, pregnancy-related risk factors such as preeclampsia are some of the early indicators for future cardiovascular risk. Emerging strategies such as coronary artery calcium and polygenic risk scores in this age group have potential clinical utility, but whose best use remains still uncertain. The use of coronary artery calcium scores should ideally occur after clinician-patient risk discussion to put the information gained from such testing to use. Finally, 
Barriers to risk assessment and treatment in young adults include fever, regular provider visits, and thus fewer opportunities for risk assessment and modification if needed. Thank you.